Tesla needs little introduction in the electric car market. In fact, the US car maker almost holds a mortgage on the segment at present, but now it's starting to broaden its attention. It has just released an updated autopilot function for the Model S. So we figured what better place to test it than on Australia's most famous piece of tarmac, Sydney's Harbour Bridge. The autopilot function is available as an option on even the entry-level variant of the Model S, but we're driving the range-topping P90D, priced from a cool $275,636 plus on-road costs. Now Tesla says this technology works in the same way that autopilot works on a plane, so when the conditions are clear, it's there to assist the driver, but ultimately it's the person in the driver's seat that's in control. Now the latest 7.0 update is actually available over the air, so it works in the same way as your phone, you simply update the software as long as you have the existing autopilot hardware, and all of a sudden you've got the very latest technology. Now interestingly, before we've been able to utilise this function, we've had to agree to a disclaimer on the screen. And I guess that's, that's going to be a real challenge moving ahead um, for authorities, because there's no real framework in Australia uh, for autonomous driving, but expect that to change. Basically, to get it going, we're, we're yet to hit the bridge yet, but just to get it going on the, the Cahill Expressway here, I've just got to pull the cruise control lever back twice. And all of a sudden I've got adaptive cruise control, so it controls the distance between the car in front and myself, so it can keep up with their speed or slow down accordingly, and it also keeps me in the lane. Now when you agree to that little disclaimer, there's a little point in there that basically says that you ultimately have control of the car. So you're not supposed to take your hands off the wheel, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. So at the moment of truth, the car keeps itself in the lane using three things. It's got uh, the radar on the front that looks out for the car in front. It's also got a camera to keep you placed within your lane. And sensors all around the car create like an invisible force field that makes sure you're, you're within objects. You're not going to come within um, striking distance of different objects. And it works pretty seamlessly out on the road. It just needs a little bit of space to operate properly. But on something like a, an expressway where you're sitting on 70 or 80 kilometres an hour, the car does everything for you. You just gotta put a bit of trust in it and, um, and know that it's gonna do the right thing. Now when it comes to changing lanes, all you have to do is actually lock the indicator stalk in. And by doing that, it turns across, repositions itself in the lane, and it's forward progress. So here goes, I'm gonna call it. I reckon this is probably the first ever autonomous crossing of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Same thing again, I just pull the lever back twice to activate the whole system and we're off and running. Now it's going to be interesting this because you have to remember this system was actually developed on you know the big um, widespread Californian motorways. This is a bit different, we've got a few more challenges, there's paint markings all over the road, obviously a lot of metal work around the actual road itself and there's cars going back and forth different ways without different dividers in the road. So. Here goes, the moment of truth. It's pretty flawless, really. Got cars whizzing past within a meter of me and it, the, the system knows that because they're not inside the lane, um, they're no trouble to me, so it's just carrying on exactly like a normal car. Pretty uneventful, really. Now I can see in the, the digital instrument cluster that this car's basically tagged a car in front, so it signals that. And it's also got little flashes when something comes past or there's an obstacle, just to say that the car can see it, it's read it, and it's posed no great drama. And there we have it, through the toll gates, I've just gone back to manual mode, first autonomous crossing of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, or we're gonna call it that anyway. Now as part of the 7.0 update, Tesla not only helps you drive on the road, but also helps you parallel park. So we're going to show you um, a bit of a demonstration now. We're using a driveway to do it, but just to give you an idea, this technology is already available on cars like Holden's VF Commodore, which partially assist in helping you park, but you still have to put have inputs in the throttle and braking. Now Tesla, all you have to do, you come up to the park, put it from drive back into reverse, you get an icon come up on the 17 inch screen, press start, take your foot off the brake, and then let the car do all the work for you. So it's controlling the steering, the braking, and the throttle input. It puts the car in backwards. Now importantly, you do need a car behind you for it to work properly, otherwise it just it won't be engaged at all. It goes off the car in front in terms of how far you are from the gutter, 
and it finishes it all off by putting the car into park. Pretty amazing stuff. While using no hands, we also used zero petrol, as the Tesla runs on pure electricity. In addition, the model we drove featured an optional ludicrous mode, allowing it to sprint from 0 to 100 kilometers in just 3 seconds. However, unlike the autopilot function, it isn't exactly compatible for the road. All the while, the P90D offered a claimed range of 491 kilometers on a full charge. Yes, that efficiency is impressive, as is the fact you can update all this software over the air as you would a smartphone. You get the feeling this is just the start of bigger things to come.